this Valentino Roses uh, live stitch long from the London Embroidery School. Um, I hope that you guys are all well today and that you're finding us all okay. Um, we did have small technical difficulties a little bit earlier on. Um, I don't know whether any of you caught that whilst I was still setting up, so so sorry about that. Not my most professional moment, but um, never mind, you know. Uh, just trying something new with you guys today. I know we've done one of these before. Um, still not quite feeling quite like a pro on it just yet. But um, yeah, I'm here to make another Valentino Rose with you guys today. The um, hashtag Val Rose Challenge is still um, going on. So yeah, get involved. The video is still live and um, still for free. So do go on the London Embroidery School website to check that out if you want to spend this um, Easter weekend making some Valentino roses because, you know, I don't know what it's like for you guys in other countries, but for us here in the UK, we've now got uh, four days off, so plenty of time to kill. Um, right, so without any further ado, we're going to start by making our petal designs here. I've decided to go for this, um, it's an organza I'm working with today, but it has got metal through the weaves, so um, I don't know how, quite how that's going to turn out for me today, but um, as you can see here, it really holds creases when I start to um, work with this one. So first things first is to take your draft. All the measurements for the drafts um, and basically the whole roses is all on our website. It's all included in the full video as well um, for you to draft your own and to get involved. Um, so I'm just going to start by pinning that to my fabric. I've just got two folds here because I have got a couple of petals that I've already cut. If you wanted to carry on folding the whole way across and then cut them all together, you can do that. You'll need probably a minimum of eight um, petals to make a good sized rose to be honest. I have done a little bit of preparation before um, before the video and have prepared a few petals here just so that you don't spend the whole time just watching me making the same petals over and over again because that would not be fun. Well I'm assuming you guys wouldn't think that's fun. I think actually constructing the rose is the more interesting bit. So, just getting that pinned nice and secure on there, making sure all of my pins stay within the um, paper template area because I don't want to blunt my scissors by hitting off a pin. All the way around, trying to keep it as smooth as I can. This one now. Take the pins out so we can get rid of the draft. So I've got another couple of petals here to use. How are all of you guys getting on today? It's so warm here, it's like unseasonally warm. I don't know how it is where you guys are and where you're joining me from in the world today. As I mentioned we uh, we did do one of these before and um, when we did I was just amazed at like where all of you guys are and what time it is that you're tuning in to me from. It's just yeah it was really cool. Okay so starting to make the petals you want to take a single thread on your needle and pop a little uh, knot into the end. And then you're just going to perform a running stitch the whole way around the petals. Now this raw edge, this is going to be the edge that becomes the inside of our rose. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, trying to finish off your roses as you go. And your running stitch should be about two or three millimeters in from the edge. This will depend where you are um, sorry, not where you are, what fabric you're using and just how fray it is. 
you don't want all your hard earned stitches to just fall out. So I'm just performing this running stitch along this edge. The petal is folded in half along the long edge, like so. So running stitch all along here. And right to the end. Ease out any tension you might have created. You want them to be flat at the end. And then I'm just going to knot it off. So they all stay exactly where I intended for them to be. There we go. Let's do another one while we're here. So again, fold in half, long ways, and we're closing out that full raw edge all the way over the top. A little bit like so. Have you had a go at the Valentino Roses challenge just yet? We've really been bowled over by the amount of people that have got involved and all the lovely comments that have been coming through from you guys. Um, yeah, it's been really wonderful. And it's really kept us going and like, kept our spirits up, to be honest. Um, it's all a little bit strange at the minute. Okay, so that's that one done. Thank you to all of you who are waving and saying hello. That's, that's really nice to sort of uh, yeah, feel your encouragement. Okay, so... 60 stitches. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Um, you're saying it's grey and cloudy in New York. Oh, yeah, that's that's a shame. Is it supposed to be grey and cloudy at the moment over there? Or um, is that sort of a bit unseasonal? Because, yeah, it's really warm here and sort of unseasonally so. Not unseasonally so. No, actually, I stand by that. It is exceptionally warm today in particular. Uh, we've got core embroidery from India. It's equally warm here. What well, I know I expect is probably a fair bit warmer where you are. I'm probably crowing over absolutely nothing here and you know what actual heat is <laughs> really about. Um, hope you guys are all okay over in India as well. Okay, so just starting with the middle, and we're rolling the middle in towards itself along that raw edge down the bottom. A little bit like so. This is going to make our bud. And just now, I hope you saw, I made a couple of um, stitches just to anchor my thread into the fabric there so just keeping on rolling can you guys see that okay ah oh, 60 stitches we're missing you too it's so strange not ha not being in the studio number one but not having people coming into the studio um you know we'd normally be setting up for like a five-day gold work course or something similar um and yeah that's all on hold isn't it Okay, so that's my bud. 
you can sort of just see the little twist in the middle there and so what I'm going to do now is where I've anchored my thread I'm just going to hold that with my left hand and go round and keep stitching into the base just coming straight up through the fabric going back down at an angle through as much of the bud as I can to just grab that and hold it into place M. Visserman from Sao Paulo it's warm oh wow so exotic so going the whole way around my bud here Just trying to keep that twist nice and tight and get everything secured. Core embroidery. Yes, we're doing our best to keep things better here in India. Yes. Yeah, I think everyone's just trying to do their, their thing at the moment, aren't they? Well, very luckily, this is something you can do, hopefully, in the isolation of your own home. Um, and I think quite a lot of the people who've already sort of made a rose will probably attest that uh, you can't just make one. You simply can't. It's it's like the law. Um, you've got to make more than one. One is lonely. So this is something that could keep you busy for the weekend should you find yourself without anything to do. Just coming up the centre here, I just want to put an extra one in. I'm finding this organza with the metal in it, it's a little bit slippy. Um, so I'm just going to use that. You see that? Just taking the centre down ever so slightly for me. And I'll probably come back and have a little look at that centre again um, when I'm coming, when I've, I've got a few of the petals on there. Just because I think that will really help to kind of sink it down and stops it sitting up too proud the, because the centre one is so skinny, it tends not to lose any of its height to the sort of whip that the others do. So, um, yeah, we'll probably come back to that in a moment. But that's feeling quite secure now. Um, I've just stitched all the way around from the other sides. OK, so going on with the first petal. Um, Again, it's this raw edge down here that's always got to stay turned in towards the bud, like so. And this is the edge that we're going to be stitching with. So I'm going to start in this corner here, and I'm just going to take that back a little bit further from the um, crossover, the downward crossover of my petal that formed the bud. Can you guys see that just on this side? So I'm going to take this one, to start maybe like over this side, I think, maybe about over here. So for our stitches, and this is what we're going to be doing for all the petals the whole way around this rose, turning that raw edge in, come up through the petal and stitch back down, basically in the same place. It's almost like a little pin tuck stitch here. Can you guys see that? And I'm going to start to use the running stitch that makes that holds the petal together as my guide. So I want my stitches to be just outside of that so that all the running stitches I created, because I wasn't that careful about them, because uh, I didn't need to be, um, they get closed in by the, the rose itself as we work on it. So I'm just pulling that round by the bud, stitching just outside the running stitch line here, ease it round. So you see straight up and straight back down, almost in the same spot. And straight back down. Look at all you new lovely people joining us. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for popping in to see us stitching today. So 
just pulling it round. This is like the tightest section where I'm sort of forcing the fabric to turn in a very small section. So I'm going to be a little bit firm with it as we come round here. Straight up, straight down. We start to see it looks getting to look a little bit rosy. Oh, guys, you will have to remind me if I'm going out of frame. I'll, I'll need you to, to call it for me. Because um, I'm just getting carried away. Carried away over this way. Then that would be no good whatsoever because you wouldn't be able to see anything. Forcing that in and round a bit like so. Coming up, coming straight back down. Just like so. So has anyone made anything else um, that they would like to share with the group? Anything that, uh, obviously once you've made some more roses, obviously, uh, that you'd recommend that we can make on our Easter weekend? I also made some, um, it's not embroidery related this one, I made some crepe paper flowers. Um, there was... Uh, some crepe paper that was bought by accident just hanging around and um, so yeah I ended up learning how to make crepe paper flowers and uh, then proceeded to make 13 of them because you know there's no half measures in my house and uh, yeah ended up a little bit inundated and just basically did that for the whole afternoon used all the paper I had and um, yeah it worked out uh, really well gone on to use them as Easter table decorations and um, just to you know brighten up the place a little bit okay so that's me coming to the end of this second petal M Vissiman, uh thank you for showing your skills you are so welcome um, yeah please do head over to the website and watch the whole video um, when I take you through properly from absolute scratch to drafting your own um, draft for these roses and the whole way through on all the things that you can do with the Valentino roses. There's lots of tips and advice on there um, that I think you guys hopefully will find really helpful. Okay, so again, just going back slightly from this petal that I just finished and that's where I'm going to start my next one so I get a nice crossover so coming up again just outside of that first running stitch line there do you see that Hope that's focusing okay straight back down my recall the metallic fabric is really pretty yes it is it's trickier than I thought it was going to be um, I thought I was giving myself a bit more of an easy task this time because those of you who uh, managed to join us last time for the Valentino Rosa Stitch Along, I did a lace, um, a lace rose with a chiffon purple base colour to it, so it was two layered, um, which was not, it was actually not as hard as I thought it was going to be but it was quite firm. Also tried this in a denim and unfortunately I've 
left them on the other side of the room. Um, I should have brought them over here so that I could stick them in the screen again. Never mind. Um, yes. And that, the denim one, that was a bit trickier because it's obviously very firm and it's quite tough on your fingers. So something to take into consideration. This one just moves a bit unusually. I guess because of the metallic nature to it. And I did, um, I don't know whether you guys noticed earlier with the fabric when I was sort of demoing. But um, yeah, I do say, like, always take the time to prepare your fabric. You know, give it an eye and give it some love before you try and work with it. Um, because it, it is worth putting in that preparation time. However, this one, because of the metal in it, it's um, really holding the creases from however many years it's been in my fabric box um, and been folded in one particular way and it was not letting them go. But luckily we've chopped it into tiny little petals and then folded them in half and are forcing them around this tiny little circle. So I don't think we're going to notice those creases very much. We're just making something entirely different basically. It's exactly what we want. I'm just going to change my thread here because it's getting a bit short, a little bit uncomfortable. I've gone for a full gold theme today. I don't know whether you guys um, have noticed that, but uh, obviously I've got a little bit of machine embroidery over here that will keep peeking out um, <laughs> as I'm working. And yeah... All my tools today are also gold. I've got my brass stiletto, which I use just on occasion to like poke in any um, any loose bits, and my curved scissors, just because they're really lovely and sharp, but also happen to be gold and fitted the theme. It was not by accident, I can assure you all. So just re-anchored my thread, carry on stitching, straight up, straight down. Watch this little guy build up. Investments. You've been doing beadwork, crochet with beads, and a little sewing. Nice. So you can crochet. That's really cool. That's such a good skill to have. And, yeah, beaded crochet. That sounds really interesting. Not seen very much of that of recent. My mum's very good at crochet and I've always been quite envious. I could sort of just about do it, but I never really got into it in the way that um, she really can make all sorts with her crochet. And then because she can crochet, I decided to teach her to timbre, um, which is an embroidery technique. I don't know whether you guys are familiar with, um, but... It's, uh, it's also with a hook, a little bit like crochet is. And so I thought she would take to it quite well, which she did. Um, but more than anything, I think the whole introduction to timbre um, exercise really just reignited her love for crochet. And she then went on to make a new, uh, a new jumper, I think it was, um, instead. Investment. Uh, tell us about the needle you're using. So this one, um, it's an embroidery needle. It's a size eight sharps. Um, yeah, it's pretty standard. It's whatever I honestly had to hand and just grabbed. Nothing fancy. The whole purpose of these is that you can um, obviously just use whatever you've got at home to make um, whatever you can really to do your roses so you know we make suggestions with the fabrics but you don't just exclusively have to use those fabrics by any means if you have got access to organza I think it probably is the easiest one to start with for your first rose but what's really exciting is when you guys just you know take the design and make it your own use whatever you've got 
you know, grab some lace, grab some denim, um, grab some velvet. Uh, yeah, there's been such a huge variety of the different fabrics that you guys have been using for your roses that we've already seen. So, um, yeah, the world really is your oyster. I'm ready for another petal here. Crystalline. Uh, you're very welcome. Can we see the rose laying sideways on the fabric and also poppies? Uh, well, these, these guys, yeah, this is just a bit of machine embroidery from um, a previous uh, piece that I did. Uh, this is just a sample bit of fabric that I'm using. So, um, yeah, nothing really to see over here. Uh, we're also doing poppies in this style. Yes. Why not? Why ever not? Um, I expect you'd probably need to play a little bit with the shape of the petals, um, but I don't see why you couldn't adapt this for other flowers equally. That's the beauty of all of these things, is about, you know, the technique, and once you've got the technique, then you can start to break the rules and do what you like best, really. Okay, so... Coming round for that next petal coming on here. Isa Berenice, you're also from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Awesome. Hope you guys are all well in Brazil too. Um, we haven't heard very much about the situation over there in the UK um, very much, but... Um, wishing you guys well and hopefully you're doing a bit better than us. I think that's uh, just what everyone's... I'm just hoping for everyone, to be honest. Is anyone stitching along with me today? Are you making your own rose as we speak? Or if you just tuned in to have a little watch? Um, or do you just like to see things being made? Because I always think that's quite... I find that quite relaxing, to be honest. Watching somebody make something from scratch and harnessing those sort of hand skills. I do have the uh, the door here by me open to the outside and um, the birds are quite incessant at the moment. They're lovely, don't get me wrong, they really are and I very much enjoy it but I hope it's not affecting the audio too much. I'm also hoping that none of my neighbours or any of uh, my family don't uh, decide to sort of start being pretty loud whilst we're trying to have nice sort of calm stitching time here. Force that in round there. Needs a little bit of encouragement as we head towards this end. And so you can see from the previous petal here and then the next one, which ended here, and then this one, which en is ending on the outside now. They're all sort of round the same side of the rows at this point. So I think with the next one, I'm probably going to try and start it a little bit further away so we don't end up with all the crossovers in the same section. So I don't think that looks, personally, I don't think that looks quite as nice. I prefer for them to be a bit more spread. Now this metal fabric, I think needs a few more stitches in the end to just keep a hold of all of that fabric, all of the little raw edge. See, that's uh, looking a bit tidier already. Okay. Okay, 
so I'm going to anchor in a new thread. The anchoring in is always important, pretty much with whatever you're working on. Um, just stitching a few stitches back and forth on top of themselves, just to allow the thread to sort of get properly caught into the fabric and be properly anchored, as the name suggests. Once you've got it anchored, then you can move on knowing that it's really secure. Now, what side do I want this one to go on? I think over here looks better. I'm going to start this one about here and that's going to take us round probably to like a single full turn. Oh, I think I've missed some of your comments. Um, Fahima Meza? Uh, we will save, we will try and save the video, yes, so that uh, anyone who's not managed to catch us live can also have a little watch of this video and hopefully enjoy it too. Isa Bernice, uh, so you guys are in complete isolation. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you're, you're finding things to do with yourselves and, you know, just looking after yourselves mentally as well as physically, because that is really important um, during this weird period that we are living in. So yeah, you're a few weeks behind. Well, a few weeks behind is, is a good place to be, you know. Um, we're learning more about this all the time, aren't we? So the more time we get, the more um, knowledge we can have accumulated and hopefully can put that into action um, before anything gets further for you guys or indeed for us. Blissfully Plink, uh, how many petals will I use? Well, I've prepared, was it eight? I want to say eight, yes. I've prepared eight, um, which I think is really, it's quite a good round number for these roses. It will make a rose probably about too big, I'd say. Um, that will depend on your fabric and the thickness of your fabric. This one is coming up a little smaller than some of the others that I've done. Of recent, obviously I mentioned the lace one and the denim one. Those were both reasonably thick fabrics and so they made slightly bigger roses than the usual. Before that I worked with some chiffon which is the one or one of the ones you see me do in the main video itself. Um, so with that one, that came up on the small side because the chiffon is quite, um, obviously quite thin and quite flexible, which is what is lovely about it. But this one, I think because the, the metallic really holds those folds, it's, it is kind of, um, tucking in on itself here. So it's... It is being smaller than I thought it would. I thought that the uh, metal in it might work in the opposite way. And because it was would be holding the fabric out, um, that it might make it a bit firmer. But you see how these folds here, they are like, they're quite crisp really. Um, if I've been doing this in the chiffon, I found that they became quite rolled, quite soft over the top. And I think that's just where, you know, it's, it's very hard to fold chiffon, isn't it? You know, because of its very flexible, fluid nature, you sort of can't hold it down. But this one, acting differently again. So... There we go. I, I too have learned something about these roses. And I can't tell you how many of these I have made. But that doesn't matter. There's still things to be learnt about fabrics. Which I think is really interesting. Okay. 
again because of the this fabric I think I'm gonna add a few more just onto the end here to get it a bit more secured investment you've been inspired have you I'm really glad to hear that you know just get involved it's it's really good fun I think they're quite relaxing to do and um, you know and anything that's if you can make something beautiful in this time I think that's got to be an excellent thing you know if you do feel able to use this odd period that we are living in to pick up some new skills, then that is a wonderful use of your time. I always think that any skills learned, whether they be embroidery or not, um, you know, any skills learned is time well spent. And the more sort of technology we have, and I'm a you know quite an avid user of technology, but the more that maintaining hand skills and crafts are important things to do make sure we don't in gaining all the information that we have through technology that we don't lose sight of the information we already have in the form of crafts and that sort of thing so i'm still using that exact same stitch that i spoke about earlier where we're coming straight up through the fabric just on the outside of that running stitch and then going down pretty much through the same point blissfully plink uh, these classes are a brilliant idea oh thank you very much uh, we do also have a chiffon roses um, class up. That one is a paid for class and um, there are kits available to go with that or you can if you've got chiffon of your own and you've got the materials um, and equipment you would need if you're already an avid stitcher then um, the class online class is £10 uh, available on our website. It's done in a very similar style to the um, chiffon roses I mean in the shooting but the way that the roses are formed are entirely different um, which is pretty cool um, and a really different way to approach making flowers. We've definitely got more up our sleeves, I, I can tell you. Um, for those of you who follow us um, on our mail out list from the website um, or have seen our Instagram post from today, we have kind of officially launched our YouTube channel. Um, which is uh, all up and running now and yeah we're really proud of it we've been working quite hard on it behind the scenes um, and it's now up and live so I think it I, what I hope for it is that it will be a um, a good resource for you guys that you can check in and have a look at some of the tips um, and tricks that we share on there from like our pro tips videos um, there's loads of bits on there from things like framing up um, quick knots different ways of threading up your needle um, yeah loads of bits present presenting your stuff in embroidery frames how to pick your embroidery frames there's also going to be some sneak peeks from stuff that we do um, in the studio that we film so you can have a little look at what it's like to be working in an embroidery studio so um, if you get the chance and if you like to use YouTube do head over there and have a little look at it um, we'd love to share that stuff with you as well so uh, Chris Ling if you do these for a garment is it recommended to do them on separate fabric and then cut them out? Yes, I'd probably say um, 
do them on a separate fabric of something that's uh, a good color for either matching the fabric that they will be mounted onto or um, you know a match to the rose itself there is in fact that's a lovely segue thank you so much uh, we have one of the pro tips videos on the new YouTube channel London Embroidery School is um, a video on tucking under as a finishing method um, which just involves uh, when you've cut out your piece on a that you've done on a base fabric just like this one that you can then um, finish it off by tucking the fabric underneath and then it looks like your embroidery is entirely freestanding it also finishes the base fabric so that it's not um, it's not going to fray on you when you've applied it to something else so um, yeah head over there to see that I think you'll find that really helpful I hope oh sorry guys Just got to readjust one second. And we're back. That all looks okay, doesn't it? Yes. And this one. Uh, tell what is your name? Oh, sorry. Yes, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Natasha. Um, and I, yeah, I work for the London Embroidery School. I also work for um, our sister company, which is called Hawthorne and Heaney. Um, where we do bespoke embroidery, sometimes hand, uh, sometimes machine, but yeah, you can see a little bit of the machine over here, um, as I mentioned earlier. And so I am a full-time embroiderer, um, which is why for the pro tip section, for example, it's all sort of things that we use in the studio that we, you know, would like to share with you guys that we think is useful. Um, sometimes it's approaches to how to do things. Um, sometimes it's uh, a way to use a particular tool um yeah it's just some of the kind of like things that we've learned from our years of stitching professionally that might just help you along just bring your stitching up a level core embroidery uh thank you for the congratulations yes i uh i had a little look just before obviously came live with you guys and we were at just under 100 followers uh 100 subscribers sorry i'm getting got to get used to the new lingo um yeah which was really cool um so that's i think that's mostly people who found us organically because obviously i only sort of officially launched today to say what we were doing um Oh, yeah. Uh, it would be really cool if after I look, well, after I'm done with you guys and we finish this little rose here, it would be cool if it was over 100 subscribers. I think that would uh, really sort of push us along. So, yeah, I'm calling out to you guys to help me out. Do you guys use YouTube very much? I mean, obviously, it's like it's a huge platform. Um, but it's uh, something that I personally have come to reasonably recently. Um, just sort of finding some people I like and things to watch on occasion. But I find that personally I tend to, or previously have only really used it as um, for things like tutorials to find out how to do things so that's why we decided to go with this angle um, with our videos of how we would share and what sort of information we would share on the YouTube channel investment oh thank you so much that's really sweet of you to say um that you love our classes uh yeah thank you it really does mean so much to us when we hear back from you guys and that you hopefully like what we're doing um and that you're enjoying it all of those things are really important to us um because if you know if it's not for the community and you guys then you know, and if we aren't a community, then what are we really?
Yes, okay, so it seems to be that you guys are, are keen on, on YouTube, so I hope you'll like our channel, I really do. Um, yeah, we've got loads of ideas of things that we want to add to the channel as well, so um, yeah, do stay posted. So this is where like, I would use the Malort, um, the stiletto even, um, because you see I've got this little bit of raw edge that's peeking out over here. Perhaps I wasn't close enough with my stitch, or perhaps that's just being a little bit stubborn. But I'm just going to use the pointy end here to tuck that right in. You've also got the nice, narrow, flat edge down the end here, which is also great for just popping bits in there. Um, and unlike if you use the needle or a pin or anything, it, because it's um, it's narrow but it's smooth, so it doesn't it can't catch your stitching. It just sort of helps to poke it in. Okay, so this is my last pre-prepared petal, but my rose is still on the smaller side, so I think it maybe could take a couple more. And I've still got a little bit of time to. Let's get this one on. So again, little crossover. And I'm going to add a few of those extra stitches onto the end here because of this fabric, in which I'm going to really try to get it to grab underneath the previous petal that's already there. Hello to you guys in Argentina as well, that's really cool. Oh, and in Rome. Thank you, Felicity Griffin Clark, for your very kind comment there. It really does help to uh, chivvy me along, because it's quite funny sort of sitting here. Oh, and some hearts coming through. You guys are so cute. Thank you. Um, just chatting away to myself. Um, and obviously I can see your comments, but it's, it's very different to like, you know, obviously talking to people in real life. Um, for me to talk out loud to you guys and then you guys to write back. It's, um, it's kind of novel. So as my rose gets wider, I do want to try and make sure that my stitching really is turning in that raw edge particularly as I you know I may these may end up as some of the outside petals so I want to make sure that the finish is really nice and tidy so really forcing the raw edge in as we come round it's a little bit like so oh I've caught the previous petal there don't want to do that and so you'll see now that as I'm doing that, forcing a little bit more, um, I've got both, well, I've got both hands on the top here for some of the stitching so I can control it a little bit better rather than using my usual preference, which is having one hand above and one hand below the frame, which is a speed technique that... Um, embroiderers use so you don't waste the time for your hand to travel above and below the frame for every stitch a bit of training but it does speed you up a little pro tip for you there Turn that in and under. There we go. Core embroidery, and you're doing quite well by managing to talk to us and doing your embroidery as well. 
I might screw up if I do this. I'm sure you'd be fine. I didn't really trust myself to do this, but, um, you know, you just got to try. You? And I'm a, I can be a bit of a chatterbox anyway, so I think the stitching comes quite naturally. Um, obviously, this isn't my first time of doing these, as I've already confessed to you guys. Um, so, yeah, my hands know what I'm doing. I just... Uh, just have to borrow the eyes occasionally to see what's going on and coming through on the phone. Oh, and you guys sort of chatting away to each other. Oh, that's really cute. Ah, oh, so, yes, right. So you used to live in Napoli. Amazing. You know, they say about the six degrees of separation, don't they? It's um, not much. Oh, and a hello there from California. Hi, California. Yelena, nice to have you join us. Okay. Right, I think I've got time for a couple more petals. So I'm going to put this aside and make a few more of those. Oops, let's just detach. Getting a little bit windy over here. So I've still got a couple of petals left. Let's uh, let's go for one more. And hello to, is it uh, Shikita Arabag official? Uh, lovely to have you join us today. Thank you for your encouragement. I am well. Thank you for asking. That's very sweet of you. I hope you're well too. Uh, Felicity Griffin Clark. Yeah, I, I think it's a really good way. I think there are a lot worse things to be doing during lockdown than this sort of thing. So, you know, if you fancy joining our um, hashtag Val Rose challenge, then do head over to our um, Instagram and do tag us in your makes so that we can see all the beautiful things that you've created. I love it when you get experimental with them. That just really makes my heart sing to know that you guys have taken it and made it your own so yeah make me happy and share some roses and you know don't be afraid to share the link um with anyone else that you think might enjoy making their own rose uh, because i think you know boredom really is the uh the biggest well one of the biggest fights at the moment so you know this is a great thing to do Hello to Vaishnavi Ray. Hello. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm really sorry if I'm not. Uh, Felicity. Yes. So, yes, not a problem to answer uh, questions about my nail varnish. Um, it is an Essie uh, nail varnish. Actually, one of my fellow embroiderers, my, she's sort of my embroidery tutor, I would say. Um, she does most of our hand embroidery in the studio and she has the most beautiful hands always they're always like perfectly manicured and they're so dainty um and she recommended using essie to me and actually bought me some for christmas uh, a couple of years ago and i've not looked back it's the couture range um this color i want to say is called something like um like tailor me or something like that tailor like m making clothes tailor um yeah something like that but uh yeah the essie couture gel range is really good and i find it doesn't chip so i haven't actually touched these in at all and i did them on monday evening so i think i'm doing pretty well 
to make it through to Thursday and still looking pretty sharp guys um I've been doing a lot of filming at the moment um hint hint um so uh hopefully I'll have nice new things to release to you guys um and obviously I want my hands to look nice for that so anytime I get any chip I'm like ah, quick fix it drives me crazy but I've been lucky this week yeah I think this extra one was a good choice Oh, so Felicity, do you use SE2? And I'm glad that um, Cassel de Lenov, you're f hopefully finding this amusing. That's really cute. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. All the love for my hands. That's really sweet. Blissfully Plink, uh, could we do a Chanel Camellia? Well, actually, this was something that I have been thinking about. And if you guys wouldn't mind me just stepping away from the camera for a moment, I've got a sneak peek to show you if you want to see. Let me know if you want to see. I've only got a couple of minutes more before I think Instagram kicks me off after being on here for an hour. And then I have to start a new one. So I'm going to try and end off before that. Just coming around this corner for my last petal. Gonna really try and tuck that into the previous one. Okay, so you guys, you guys are a game for a little sneak peek. I think you deserve it. I'm glad I put that last one in. I think that's making it look really balanced and it's really quite round. Okay, everything's gonna go a little bit wobbly for a sec. So hang on. I will come back. Okay, just gonna leave that there. Okay, are you ready? This is what I've, this is my first go of these for like quite a few years. So different kind of rose altogether. This one I've done in a satin, but could definitely, it's entirely freestanding. And this one does need, it's got, yeah, no base fabric on it. Um, yeah, which I think does look a little bit more chameleon-y. It's a lot more smaller petals that all sort of fold in tightly. I thought about what we might be doing next yeah you guys seem to be quite keen on that one you'd be interested in seeing on how to make these guys too I will uh, definitely keep that in mind right so that is my rose done and I think we're at the end of our hour here so I will post this onto our site um, on the live and hopefully uh, I'll try and record the video as well Okay, uh, yeah, please do share your photos, um, tag us in them, and then we can have a look, and hopefully we can share um, your photos on our site too, because we love that. Right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel.